Hi, everyone. All right, so we have some exciting news. We have our, um, today's the launch of our DWG files import and our DSF files import. So I know I've had a lot of questions about people asking if they can um, import these AutoCAD files into our system. Now you can. So I'm going to be able to show you how to do that and um, a little bit of the features, you know, that goes with it. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And if you have any questions, go ahead and um, ask your questions in the chat and I'll be checking back to answer any questions. And let's try to keep it to um, what the feature is because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about different things in the software. You can always um, contact me at support at seizure.com if you want to ask any other questions. Um, or if you have questions about any other new feature, go ahead and ask. But everything else, let's try to keep it concise. All right, so the first thing is when you are um, ready to upload your DWG or DXF file, and I am saying those two correctly because you are able to upload both DWG and DXF files. So just keep that in mind. Um, there are some of the files that aren't able to be uploaded into our system. And mostly is because those files have something wrong with it. There's some kind of a bug in there that cannot be imported. So also keep that in mind. But when you're ready to upload, um, as you know, we have moved our trace image option now to the right panel. So when you're on the terrain, it's going to show this large um, green box to be able to upload. But if you go to any other floor, let's say I'm going to go to the ground floor, it's actually going to be an icon. This icon is not going to be, it's going to be red or pink in the beginning because usually new features are, you know, they're pink with the little dot showing you that is a new feature. But moving forward, it's just going to be right next to the information tab. So just click on that tab and you'll be able to access your imported file. So you're gonna go ahead and click on import your trace image and make sure you have your DWG or DXF file already downloaded onto your computer. I'm gonna click on this one. And it's gonna take a little bit, um, like less than a minute to upload. And once it uploads, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna show the different layers that you have on here. Um, for mine, I don't have that much layers on there. That's why you're only seeing what you're seeing. I have um, the cabinetry kind of built in. I have where the lighting is going to go. I have stairs and I have the trace for the deck. So that's why you're, you're going to be able to see all of this. But in the right panel, this is where you will see all the layers are checked. And to have a layer sh shown on your grid, you have to have it checked. So always remember that. If your DX, um, if your file, a DXF or DWG file has a lot more layers than mine does, it's gonna be a whole list of those layers that's gonna be under here. And if you would like to select, let's say you only wanted to show walls and you don't wanna show lighting, you can just uncheck the box and it's not gonna show in your um, in the image that's gonna be on your grid. So just remember that. So for now, I'm going to click on lighting just for now. As you select each item, you'll see that it's going to gray out. And that just means that there's the magnetism option is not going to be on your um, on the grid. So now you have two options. You have your magnetism and you have to highlight. For the highlight, you don't have to necessarily click on it. You don't have to click on it at all. Just hover your mouse over the light and you can see each layer. So when I put my mouse over this, it's only going to show the lighting later, layer. I put my mouse over the walls. And next, you have stairs, you have the deck, cabinetry, so forth. So this, is, this allows you, especially for those that have a, like multiple layers, like a lot of different layers on your file, it allows you to select which one you want to use. You don't necessarily have to use all of them. You can just click the box to select which one you want to use. From this, I want to use, um, I don't need the lighting, so I'm going to uncheck the lighting. Um, I don't need the cabinetry, so I'm going to uncheck the cabinetry. Um, I'm going to leave the deck, the stairs, the walls, and I'm going to uncheck this. Um, and there are some 
layers. When you download your file, there are some layers that are not going to be, they're not going to give you an option. You will see the layer here, but it's going to be grayed out. And that just means that specific layer cannot be imported into our system. That's what that means. Um, as we are changing the software, as we're working to improve it later on, that might, you know, every single layer might be on there. But just remember, if you see a layer or you see a section that is grayed out, that means that specific section cannot be imported into our system. It's nothing to panic about. It's just that's what happens. All right. And then the next option now, you have the magnetism. So your magnetism is where when you download, when you import the file on your grid, you allow the software to connect your, when you're drawing your walls, it'll automatically connect to where those walls are. So your, um, as you draw, it'll, the magnet will kind of like take it specifically where you need it to go. If the magnetism is not on, it's not going to have that magnet to connect to the walls. So I'm going to I'm going to put my magnetism on for the walls. I don't need it for the stairs and I'm going to keep it on for the deck. Actually, I'm going to uncheck it for the deck. Um, the next thing you do, as you see, you cannot just validate it. You can't just say OK and go. You have to select your layout unit. And one thing to note is in the beginning, before you even open your planner, make sure you set your measurement when you are editing and adding the project. So when you're in the slot where you change the name of the project, um, where you put a description, that is where you either gonna pick imperial or metric. And you wanna pick the um, unit of measure that is already on the document. So if the document is an imperial unit of measure, which is what we use here in the US, then make sure you pick imperial when you are um, creating your file when you're creating your project. If it's metric, do the same thing. Um, because then when you come over here, the next thing you want to do is it's going, since it says Imperial, it gives me two options for inches and feet. You're going to pick the option that it's already on your plan. So this specific plan is inches. They're using inches as a, uh, uh, the unit of measure or the um, the unit on this specific plan that I have. So I'm going to select inches because if you select feet and the plan is four inches, it's not going to add to your grid on a, the accurate on a correct scale. It's either going to be really like way too large or way too small. So make sure you select the unit of measure that already comes on the file. So if the file is only using feet, then you select feet. If the file is only using inches, then you select inches. If the file is using feet and inches, select feet. So those are things that you keep in mind. So for now, I'm going to select inches and then validate. And here is the image. That's the, the layout on the background. So once you have this, I'm going to show you. You want to notice that, remember when I selected the magnetism option? Now you have the magnetism tool right here. So this magnetism was already there um, prior to this. You know, it was already a default option that was on the software anyway. But the one next to it, it's specifically for the trace image for a DWG and a DXF file. So just keep that in mind. You can deactivate it by clicking on it and turning it off or make sure you keep it on by keeping it green. And I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to select wall. And I'm going to start. So I want you to see how automatically the option for wall, it's, it kind of gets pulled into where the wall is on my plan. So as I move around, that's what the magnetism does. It allows you to follow the plan exactly to get the proper scale. So I'm going to just, let's say I'm going to draw... And because the magnetism is going to select either corner, the inside or the outside corner, just go ahead and draw it because what's going to happen is towards the end, like when you're done drawing, you can then go and click on each corner to correct it to make it a 90 degree angle. All right. 
And as usual, you have your plan here in the 3D image. And then just go around, click on zoom into each corner. You'll see this green dot. And you see that this is not a 90 degree angle. Just click on it to snap into 90 degrees. This is already 90 degrees. So you can go around and you do that to all of them. Because you, if your walls are supposed to be 90 degrees, that's actually very important as you continue drawing and continuing to add your roof and other sections to your house. That's really important. So always make sure um, it's set at 90 degrees. And, or you can go ahead and you can deactivate the magnetism, but you, you'll still be able to draw the walls. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna bring it in exactly how it needs to be. It's just gonna be free flowing like before. So yeah, so those are two things. Um, another thing is you always have your, um, in the right panel, once you are not, when you're clicked into the design, you notice that you don't see the traced image on the right. So click outside of the design on the grid, and now you see the icon for the trace image. So you can always go back on it, and you can modify the trace image. So just click on here. If you need to modify it for any reason, if you want to show another layer, if you want to add another type of magnetism, you can go back to that modify icon um, to do that. And then you also have the options for uh, opacity. So if you will like, if you've already traced your um, the design and you don't want it to show, you want it to show, but you don't want it to show as much, you can lower the opacity. So just kind of, it'll, it'll be a fade, faded image in the background, or you can increase it. If you want to show a lot more than 50%, you can increase it to be, a, to be darker. So just, you know, that's one thing to keep in mind. And you can also move it. Sometimes when you add your um, plan, it might be a lot larger or a lot smaller, or it might be off-centered, right, from where you want it to be. You can always rotate it. Or you can move it over. So keep that in mind. And you also have your option. You can um, uncheck the traced image underneath or check it to add it. When you uncheck it, the magnetism icon goes away. Or you can check it to add it. And each trace image, you can upload a different image for each floor. So if you were to add another level, you can either duplicate the previous floor or you can go back here to your trace image icon and now you can click on it and add another floor to your plan. So just that's kind of something to keep in mind as well. I'm going to delete that. Um, let's see if anybody has any questions. Okay, I see someone's typing. And feel free if you have any questions to go ahead and ask, you know, right now. It's the perfect time to ask any questions. Um, another thing to also keep in mind, the magnetism tool is only available in your layout step. So keep that in mind. You cannot go to your furnishing step or um, and try to use a magnetism tool because it's not going to be active. You can't use it in the exterior step either. Because I know the deck option is here. When you go to your deck, you can draw it out using you know the traced image in the background, but you're not going to be able to use the magnetism tool outside of the layout step. So just keep that in mind. All right, if nobody has any questions, I think I've covered just about everything. Um, another thing to keep in mind is after 31 days, your DWG option here to modify it will be grayed out. So if you've already downloaded that file and you've been using it, let's say after specifically 31 days, you will not be able to modify this file again. So you won't be able to click on this to modify it in here. If you need to, you'll have to delete the image and then upload it once again to be able to have the option to modify the trace image. So just remember that if you've downloaded a file and then 
31 days later, you're trying to modify the actual file. It'll still be here in the background, but you won't be able to modify it. And you need to, you have to go back and you will have to delete the option and then upload the file once again to be able to have that option. Um, and if you, let me go ahead, uploaded it. I'm gonna save. And let me show you how you're able to convert your measurement, your unit of measure. And if you have, for example, if you have a metric project, a project that's metric, the first thing you want to do is set your measurement unit on for metric and then upload it on the planner like we just did um, and then set it for millimeters, centimeters, however it is. And if you like to convert it to um, imperial, that's your first step. So go ahead and add it on as a metric unit, save the project and then come back here and change your unit of measure. So well, you can't change it right here. You're changing it here. Click on these three dots and convert the measurement system. And this is how you, you it'll say convert and open project. So you're converting it from, right now my project set on Imperial, I converted from Imperial to metric, but you have to upload it the proper way to be able to do that. So if it's already set on metric, you have to make sure you add your project and make sure you select metric, upload the file, select the unit for a centimeter, millimeters, you know, whatever the metric is that's already attached to that file, save it, and then come back out to change the unit of measure if you like to convert it. Um, or before, if you that's not an option, then make sure it's converted prior to bringing it into our system. All right, I think um, what data can be used from the DVX file, for example, door and window openings. Yes, so you're able to, let me go back to it. Um, for your DWX file, most of them will have more door and window openings, and um, you'll be able to have a specific uh, exact scale. So I know a lot of times when people upload PDF files or PNG, they don't have that specific scale already set. So now when you upload, you have the exact, our system recognizes the scale, and you have the exact scale that is in that file. Um, if your file has, like for this, it already has the where the lighting is supposed to go. It has, this does not have the um, the doors on there or the windows on there, but some of them do. So that gives you the specific skill that you need to work with when you're adding in your windows or your doors. Um, and it's just up to what kind of file you are uploading into the system. And the one of the main reasons this is beneficial is for those that have multiple layers in their, um, you know, in their project that doesn't just have the layout and that actually is getting it from an architect or getting it from a contractor. They have the DWG file already or they have the DXF file. So you don't have to convert it to PNG or PDF to be able to put in our system. Um, so that's one of the benefits for it. But yes, the, the this option gives you the different layers in your project to be able to add it to our system. So now you have these layers so let's say I'm going to add the, the lighting option um, and I'm going to validate it. So now the lighting is there. If you go to the furnishing, it's going to be um, now you're able to kind of look. All right. This is where I need to put my lighting. This is where I need to put my lighting based on what you see here. And you go to your furnishing and then you can add your lighting that way. So those are options um, that you have as well. But it's just it's specifically what you have and um, what you want to be able to download our system. We're just allowing you now to be able to bring that kind of file into the system. All right, so I think so far I've answered the two questions. Um, if anybody has any more questions, go ahead and email me at support Most likely I'm gonna be the one responding to you. Um, and I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining me. Bye.